morning. Good morning. It is, it is good to see all of you here this morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This is a great day. This is the day that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good job. I should have like candy, and if people said the right thing, I could like throw it. <laughs> like they throw rolls in Missouri. Um, okay, one very important announcement is that this little insert that is in your bulletin, you will want this when we start communion. So make sure that you have this front and center so that we can... Uh, do communion. It is a little bit different than normal. That is all that I have this morning. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. We're gonna do four Let verses. everyone oh, everywhere first. shine with praise to God. Let it all out. Go ahead and praise him. For he has conquered us with his great love and his kindness has melted our hearts. His faithfulness lasts forever, and he will never fail you. Go ahead. Let it all out. Praise God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Rockbrook. Happy Easter to you as well. I have a couple of quick announcements before we begin our worship. Please, there's so many of you here today. We are so grateful that you chose to attend Rockbrook United Methodist Church on Easter Sunday. We would love to see your shining faces next week too. But today we would love for you to register the fact that you attended with us today. So please take a moment to sign your name on the, the attendance pad at the uh, inner part of the pew and pass it along so that we know that you chose this day to celebrate with us the risen Lord. These Easter flowers are beautiful, and next week they will not. <laughs> Please take them home. If you were one who had donated to have them brought to the church, they're yours to take today. There are also some out in the par parlor, so if we run out here, please look for your flowers out in the parlor on your way out. Next week, we will be having worship with the Lydia House as a as special guest to tell us all about their ministry. And I believe there are a few announcements in the bulletin that I will leave to your ability to read and understand well, to, uh, to read for yourselves, so that we can get on with the worship of our Lord. Please stand with me if you are able for the call to worship. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Morning has broken on the dawn of redemption. Reconciliation has won. Death has been Surely nothing is impossible with God. The stone once blocking access to Jesus has been removed forever. No longer can anything separate us from the love of the triune God. Our opening hymn is number 302. We'll sing verses 1 through 3 and number 6.
And while we're uh, waiting for others to join us, I'm Julie Vidlack, the children's director here. And a couple of announcements that are coming up uh, that all children and visitors as well are welcome. Camp Fontenelle is our church camp outside of Fremont. It has a lot of really wonderful programming for the summer. So if you're interested in that, see me if you haven't gotten information. And one important note is that the early bird discount, I believe $25, expires tomorrow. So if you're interested in signing up, please do so. Uh, if you sign up after tomorrow, it still works. You just don't get the discount. Um, the second thing is our Vacation Bible School Camp Firelight will be June 9th through the 13th this summer from 6.15 to 8.15 p.m., a Sunday through Thursday night. We always have tons of fun, at least I think so, and uh, we are welcome. We welcome any children age three through sixth grade, completed sixth grade, and we love visitors and friends, so think about that as an option as well. Good morning. Good morning. I'm really glad to see all of you here today. It's so exciting for me on an Easter Sunday when we have lots of people on the steps. So I'm very excited that you're here. Have you had a good morning so far? Okay, I hope so. Easter is one of those really special days, isn't it? There's lots of different parts to what makes it special. But in the church, we definitely have two days that are the most important in our calendar year. The one is Christmas, and Christmas would be when we talk about the baby that was born. Who's the baby that was born? Jesus. Jesus, right, very good. And we celebrate Jesus' birthday, essentially, right? Um, Jesus was special because who is Jesus' father? God. So God sent Jesus down to earth for a special reason, to teach us more about God, how to love one another, and how to eventually end up with God forever. So that's Christmas. Now, in our calendar year, we just jump a few months and it's already Easter, which used to confuse me as a kid. But in real life Bible times, we jump ahead 33 or so years to when Jesus was a grown up. And that's when we celebrate the ministry of Jesus and all he did as a grown up and eventually what God sent him for, which was to die on the cross for us. And then the good news of Easter is that he's no longer dead. He is risen, right? That fancy word risen means he is alive. And because Jesus died like that for us, it's an example of what will happen for us. If we believe in Jesus and follow his ways, we too will be alive forever with Jesus and with God in heaven, okay? So that's what Christmas and Easter have to do with each other. Now, another fun part of Easter is Easter eggs, right? Did any of you get any this morning? Yeah. Or maybe you're going to Easter egg hunt today, okay? I'm going to give you an egg, and I don't want you to do anything with it yet. So are you supposed to open it? No. Okay. <laughs> You'll open it when I tell you to. Yep, we'll open it in just a second. You might think in your head, what is in this egg? In your head, you can think, what might be in this egg? I know some of you are already shaking it. Is that giving you any clues? You're welcome. Okay. All right, I did something different this year, so go ahead and open it. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you hold it up and show them? What is it? Jesus. Does anybody know why I made a mistake? If you think of the Easter egg like the tomb, you know, when Jesus was uh, no longer alive, they put his body in a cave and then they put the stone over it, right? Like we talked about in Sunday school. And think of this like the tomb. 
So if we were like the women on the morning of Easter and we went to the tomb and looked inside it, what should be in there? Was Jesus in the tomb on Easter morning? No. Get Jesus out of there. He does not belong in there. Get him out. Take him out. Get him out. Hurry up. Take him out. Hold him in another hand. He doesn't belong in there. Why? Why wasn't he in the tomb? He's, he rose from the dead. He's alive, right? The ladies didn't see him right away, but eventually they saw, oh my goodness, Jesus is alive. He is no longer dead. And so we don't want to keep him in the tomb. We want to take him out, get him out of there, okay? We want to take him out, and you can do whatever you want with him. If you need to put him in there to keep him safe while you go home, great. But when you get home, what are you going to do? Take him out. Let him out. Okay? Jesus is no longer dead. He is alive. And that is why we celebrate G uh, Easter. Our Bible verse today comes from the Gospel of Matthew 28, verse 6. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. And remember, risen is a fancy word that he came back to life. Thank you for being here on this Easter Sunday. It is the most holy and most important day in our Christian life. So be happy, not just for Easter eggs and candy, but be happy that Jesus is alive. And for what kind of life do we get to have? Eternal, Eternal life, that's right, okay. All right, put your Jesus back in the egg, just to keep him safe. Okay. okay. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, we are so thankful for holy and happy days like Easter where we can really celebrate and remember what your love is all about. Help the children this week to continue that celebration as we serve you throughout our days and also be with the children who couldn't be here with us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Hope to see you again next week. Have a great day.
If you will turn to the back of your bulletin, you will see all the folks that we need to keep in our prayers. Are there any other prayers or joys that we need to be aware of this morning? When we were planning worship, I said I wanted to as much noise as we could make. And so, good noise. And so, um, we are singing more hymns than normal. The kiddos sang, the choir singing, or sang, the bells are playing. And I just think that's a great way to uh, celebrate God is through sound and joyful noise. So I hope that you are enjoying it as much as we are up here. Let us go to our God in prayer. God of grace and power, we have longed and prepared for this joyous day. On Ash Wednesday, we humble ourselves before you. On Monday, Thursday, we learned a new commandment. On Good Friday, we cried at the foot of the cross. And on Holy Saturday, we kept vigil. And on this blessed Sunday, we rejoice in the risen power of love, hope, and new life. Make this rising real in our own lives. Let us be people of love, hope, and new life. Let us be people of joy. There are many before us that we name out loud, that we have named silently in our hearts, who are sick both in body and or spirit. We pray for them as they battle their illness in hospital or in home, in care facilities, recovering from surgeries at rehab facilities. God, we just pray for all of these folks. We pray that they can feel your spirit. God, we also pray for the doctors and nurses and friends and family and hospital staff and first responders that take care of these folks. God, be with all of these folks as well and give them perseverance and continue to let them use their gifts to care for others. We pray for all of these folks. God of love, hear our prayers. We pray for all of those who are in areas of natural disaster, countries where there is war, and places where there is political unrest. God, we pray for those who are staying, we pray for security. For those who are fleeing, we pray for safety. For those that see no other way, we pray for hope. God, we pray for all the first responders that are there, for all the people providing relief, God, we pray that these folks will continue to have courage, will continue to have hope. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for our church and the church universal. We pray that everything that we do is pleasing to you. We pray that... In the midst of all the chaos that we will continue to be your hands and feet. God, help us to be people that not only praise you here in this building, but also folks who help others outside these walls. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for our military personnel and for their families. God, we pray that you will keep these folks safe and that you, they will continue to have courage. And God, we pray for the families, for the sacrifices that they make. God, be with all of these folks and let them know peace. God of love, hear our prayers. God, on this holy day where we celebrate the fact that death does not have the final word. We give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for the life of Jesus. 
We pray that we will continue to figure out the days to come, how to serve others, how to love others, how to bring peace to this broken world. We pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. If you will rise in body and or spirit, we will turn to hymn number 310 in the red book and we will sing He Lives. Please remain standing as we read the scripture today. Our scripture comes from Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Very early, in the morning on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their faces toward the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here, but has been raised. 
Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee. That the human one must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they didn't believe the women. But Peter ran to the tomb. When he bent over to look inside, he saw only a linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. This is the word of God in and around us. You may be seated.
God of all that we have, God who is the risen King, we thank you today for all the things that you have given us. We give back but a small portion of that that you have given. Please use it to further your kingdom in this world, to bring the peace and the love and the salvation that you sent your son to give us so very long ago. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So when you see me like lift up my arms, that means you should be speaking, okay? So um, there's a lot of talking for uh, this um, liturgy. Resurrection, rebirth, the call of this God is a call to live, a call to love, a call to be. We encounter God when we enter life, when we have the courage to be ourselves around other people, when we are serving others and caring for those who are ill, when we realize who we are. People who believe in a risen Christ, we can be found. There is a commitment to live, to risk, to love. This is the meaning of the resurrection. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We all know what it is like to go through rough periods in our lives. We know that it's hard. Those periods, they, it tears you down and it forces you to drop to your knees and it makes you shake your fist at God. But we continue to live. And in living, there is a resurrection in love giving life, love that breaks through the walls of pain. When we know who love is, we are lifted into life. When we accept a resurrected Christ, that which is a holy mystery, that is holy love, we are beyond complete and Jesus is beyond complete knowledge, above perfect description, source of life, living word, and the bond of love. You are creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of the universe. Nothing, absolutely nothing exists that does not find its source in you. Through fear-filled days and aching nights when the powers of death have done their worst, your love has never, never deserted us. Even when we turn away from you, you are with us. Your patience never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life, they transform us. And we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are fully of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you for Jesus Christ risen to life, eternal as your love. With the women at the tomb, we raise the strain of gladness. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Life is stronger than death. And the day of resurrection, it has come, scattering fear and gloom. And so we rejoice with all your people of every time and place place to proclaim the glory of your name. It is Jesus, 
God incarnate, the risen Christ, who joins us together as community of broken but hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and place. We are all broken but hopeful believers. Can you imagine how broken the women were when they went to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body and he was not there? I mean, they had all gone through so much. They had been at the Last Supper. Jesus told them what was going to happen. And then he had washed all of their feet. What an act of love. And then they watched as Jesus had been beaten and how he had carried that cross through town and up that hill. And from different areas, they watched him being hung, his side pierced, and watched him die because the weight of his body was too much for him to keep on breathing. And here they are now. A community of broken people who were told to live like Jesus. And what were they to do next? We are told what happens next. Some of them head to Emmaus, and who do they encounter? Jesus. Their eyes do not recognize Jesus. They encourage Jesus to stay with him. Jesus does stay, and they gather at the table. And now we come to the meal. This sacramental common meal, it was a powerful place. The gospel writers put incredible significance on the meal. Something magical and mystical happens when Jesus is involved with common elements like bread and wine. When the church gathers to worship the risen Christ, there is a sharing of a meal. We first meet Jesus turning water into wine so that the folks at the wedding could have more fun or be less thirsty. We then meet Jesus again blessing and breaking that loaf of bread to feed the 5,000. And then we meet Jesus again, blessing and breaking bread at the Last Supper. And then we meet Jesus blessing and breaking the bread on the Emmaus Road. It is in this meal that we receive grace. It is in this meal that we remember Jesus. We remember his promises and the price that he paid for who he was, what he said, and what he did. On that night before he died, he took the loaf. He lifted it up, gave thanks. He broke it and said, take, eat. Whenever you do this, Remember me. And after the supper was over, I'm sure that he refilled his cup. He did the same thing with the cup. He lifted it up to God. He blessed it. And he said, This is the new covenant. Remember me. And we do remember. We remember his life of love, his friendship, his teaching, his dying, and his rising to life again. It is in sharing this meal that we live out the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Holy mystery, God the Spirit, we call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. Bless this bread and this cup, this wheat and this grape, the farmer and the harvest and the seed and the sower, so that in the sharing of these simple elements in community, we may taste and see your goodness. There is such simplicity in everyday items like bread and juice. 
what they mean for us is transformational. I sat at my desk on Thursday and I ate so many of these darn little Reese's peanut butter eggs. Now I'm not talking about the ones that are shaped in the egg. I'm talking about the ones that are in like the shiny wrapper that when you put them in your mouth, they, they um, melt. I didn't know they were such a thing, but they are, and I ate a remarkable number of them. I was insatiable. Like, I just kept on, like, taking the wrappers and eating them and waiting until that peanut butter melted in my mouth. And then I was like, oh, I should do that again. <laughs> and again and again. I thought I was going to be sick, and then I felt like I needed to go lay down in the parlor and take a really, really big nap. After that had happened, I had taken communion with someone outside these walls. Probably their last communion that they will have. There's something mysterious when folks gather for a meal. Something about humanity coming together to celebrate this powerful gift that God has given us. And as I took a little piece of the bread and dipped it into the juice and put it into my mouth to chew it, I was, sa I was satisfied. Not anything like those Reese's eggs. I was satisfied with the simple meal of bread and grape. The meal that we share at Jesus' table is one in which a small amount of food provides deep nourishment for our soul. And as I was walking out of the building, there was this lady potting these gigantic buckets of yellow flowers. And that color was just breathtaking. And the idea of sharing in the holiest of meals with folks and then seeing those magnificent colors left me in sort of a trance as I drove back to the church. Communion is a meal of celebration and joy, and there is always, always enough for all to be fed. God calls all of us because God loves us. We are here because Jesus has called us. Strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and those who are curious. It's always a mixed couple that, Jesus, that gather with Jesus. But Jesus invites them all to the table regardless. Invites them all to a table where there is bread and wine. And he meets us. And through him, we, we are made different. And we are joined together to each other. So come. Not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come. Not because of how you feel, but because God has food for you. Come, not because you deserve a place, but because Jesus, Jesus invites you just as you are. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. 
power and the glory forever. Amen. Come. The table is open for all of us, just as we are. That's the beauty of the United Methodist Church is that anybody, anybody can come to the table. There's not a secret handshake. You don't have to, like, smile, anything. You can come in all of your grumpiness, all of your happiness, all of your joyfulness. Anyone can come to the table and receive the grace of Jesus Christ. Servers? If you want to, anyone that needs to remain seated, uh, we will come to you and serve communion. If you would like, just raise your hand and let us know so that we can give communion to you.
the cup of the new covenant given to you. Let us pray together. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. This in the closing hymn number three twenty two. walk out you are going to be given a stone I would like you to put this stone somewhere where you can see it on an everyday basis to remind you that Christ arose and for you to live a life that is full of peace love and joy and to share that with others go in peace amen